I thank you from the bottom of my heart for coming and joying to receive you in my house. But I will use the opportunity to ask you some maybe political questions. I need to do that. Because the background is that a lot of my of good friends who are Catholic or Protestant or Christians have lost the, f the confidence in the church because of some some happenings in the church. Two things are very crucial. The topic of the abuse and the not making it transparent what has been what has happened there. We talked about it. You you are completely right. It's a common society situation. But I would appreciate so much if the church could be the leader, the good example as you told me. What could you, um, His Excellency, please advise? How could you advise? What would you suggest how this situation, let's call it scandal also, could be solved in a healing way? Because Jesus is healing. Please give me a good answer for that. Well, I think uh, my answers uh, to that would be those uh, that the Pope has already said many times. Uh, it's absolutely true. And it's just right that the society would expect the church to give a good example. I mean, if the church preaches uh, high moral principles, uh, it has to it has to behave according to the principle it preaches. And above all, it has to behave according to the gospel. So you are totally right on that. Uh, whether or not the church is being singled out, that's another question. Yeah. But I think the church must, and I think it has recognized, that it is just normal that people would demand uh, a high, uh, a high moral standard, and that's why, that really, probably is the context of why it's just so scandalous that people get so disappointed about, especially cases in the past in which were, what we called cover up, or uh, I mean the the new laws in the church, the new the new norms are strictly, very very strict, and bishops, who. Uh, who cover, who are discovered to have uh, encouraged victims not to report, to have encouraged priests not to report, or who have themselves tried to cover up cases, uh, they would be gone yeah. immediately according to the new norms. Because I think all institutions, all, every person has a tendency to cover something that uh, is not to his or her advantage. But uh, that is certainly has not only to be resisted morally, but it legally. And that's why we have these new norms, which would prevent uh, bishops and priests. The first thing, once the church receives what we call a credible accusation, one of its first duties is to immediately report it to the police, to the civil authorities, to the competent authorities, so that they would start to investigate. Another thing which touches my friends, I like the Christian ideas and I don't want to have the separation between Protestant and Catholic. My Protestant friends want to have the Eucharistia, the, oh, yeah. in English, sorry. Uh, the, the Mass, the, the, mass. the Eucharist. They want yeah. to share it. I know the, di the di difference, but they are longing for that. I don't want to talk about ecumene, but give me one, one sentence how you could imagine that there would be more unity with celebrating within the Christian group. Yeah, certainly the, the movement the movement towards uh, Christian unity has been there, especially, I might say, the big push on part of the Catholic Church was the Second Vatican Council, of course. One of the three documents and uh, uh, interreligious dialogue, of course, with the Protestants, we call that ecumenism because, yeah, exactly. uh, because we are in the same religion, uh, so we are one Christian family. Yeah. And then so we have this... Uh, 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 the Vatican has a special apparatus, a special department. It's called the, uh, the Christian Unity Department, the Pontifical Council. We receive uh, communion we receive because we Catholics, we believe that this is the body and blood of Christ. This is really the central point there. The Protestants, uh, it's symbolic. I mean, you know. So that, that, that's really the big difference there. In what way we could celebrate the Mass together uh, without this fundamental difference, I think we still have to to make a, a, a way uh, to practice. practice. Yeah, of course, we, uh, we participate, the Catholics participate in Protestant. You know, in, in the Gran Canarias, you know, I mentioned that in, 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 uh, in the south, in, uh, in the Playa del Inglés, uh, which is the big tourist uh, place of the Gran Canarias in the south, the, uh, the Catholic Church built, uh, built the ecumenical temple. 
all the Protestant churches, all the Christian churches take turns in celebrating the, uh, their, their liturgies there. The Lutherans have their celebrations, the Evangelical Lutherans, and then the Evangelicals, other Evangelicals who are not Lutherans, etc. So all of them take their turn during the day so that everybody who comes to visit there feel comfortable to celebrate their liturgy in, uh, in a place of worship. What is the meaning of the last journey traveling to Iraq? For the world, uh, yeah, really the, the, the trip of the Pope to Iraq has could be, could be, could be, could be seen, could be evaluated on different levels. On the political level, I think it was very, very important to show the world this part of the world that we're still suffering from all this sectarian uh, violence. And uh, at the at the level of interreligious dialogue, especially between Christians and Muslims, I think it it was a huge step. The Pope was able to meet the head of the Shiite, uh, the Iraqi Shiite uh, Al Sistani, and. Uh, in part of the government, the government declared March 6 as the as the national day of fraternity and and uh, peaceful coexistence in honor of the visit of the Pope. And above all, for the Pope, it was really to fulfill the promise to visit the suffering Christians and Catholics in in Iraq. Why doesn't the Pope come to Spain? Well, he has uh, probably an answer to that. <laughs> yeah. Probably said, I have not even been to Argentina. <laughs> that's, a, that's a diplomatic answer, you know that. Yeah, the, the, the Pope uh, uh, has received many Spaniards, of course, in the Vatican, and they, they come and visit to present to the Pope invitations. And uh, all of them uh, tell me that the Pope has more or less some questions he might visit, uh, but he will, in the end, it's, it's him who will decide. But he said that, really, I, I would like to give priority to spend my time to visit small countries, countries which have never, never been visited by a Pope. So I think, uh, you know, who knows? Uh, I mean, we pray that he would, in 2022, next year, there will be the, uh, the uh, what they call that, the fourth centenary of the conversion of St. Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of the Jesuits. <laughs> no, yeah. Not an easy question. No, yeah. not, 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 yeah. I could not answer no. it in his behalf. No, yeah. no, only one, one natural question. Uh, what would you say is the main duty of the church in our world? My answer to that would be, I would always go back to, to, to the last uh, documents of the Pope, this, uh, this uh, what we call encyclical Fratelli Tutti, uh, Brother Soul. Although you said it's been controversial in English, brothers and sister soul. <laughs> but brother soul, yeah. Language. Don't do that here. Yeah, it's brother soul. And uh, so it's, 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 it, it's a papal document. So in a sense, it's a Christian Catholic document, but it's addressed to everybody. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, really this, uh, this message that we are all the same, we are all equal, we are all one human family, I think it's an important witness for all of Christianity, that the whole world, we open up to the whole world. It's, it's not anymore being, we call self-preferential. Yeah. I think the opening to the world, I mean, you know, everybody maintains its, his or her conviction, in, but there is that witness for us, you know, it's, I think the gospel is, is never be an imposition, it is an invitation. You proclaim it, it's a proclamation. That's the duty, that's the responsibility, the mission that the Lord has given to, to us, to all of us. But it's proclamation, you know, it's a proposal. Right. You know, if, if you give good witnessing to your proposal, you would be more credible in your message. And I think I that's, think it's uh, yeah, uh, yeah. it's really the credibility because the credibility could only be there when there is a coherence between what you preach and, and how you live. And I think, I think that's always a primary thing. Uh, evangelization, you could preach the whole day, <laughs> but if you are not credible, then as right. uh, St. Paul says, it's like you are like a banging gang or something. We normal people are allowed persons to give una bendición. We are disciples. In the Philippines, it's very common. Every parent blesses their children at I the end do. of the day. I do this yeah. to my children. Uh, <laughs> Probably did. Yes, I do. I'm <laughs> my children. Oh yeah, but in the Philippines, we kiss the we kiss the hand. 
because the Han and our parents, they are parents who bless their children with a cross. Because even religious practices have their cultural context. Uh, yeah. You also have to consider that. Thank you uh, for, for us. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, we answers, have to go home now. <laughs> but you have to show my children what they do. Tell them, please. <laughs> she said, oh, they were not convinced. They're not convinced. <laughs> oh, my mother, my mother would not be happy. Yeah.